It's Sunday, July 26, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. Uh, oh, I have to hit a button. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt <clears throat> nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Venture Turbine Lakes, episode number 562. And this is what happens when you have insomnia. Hi. Yay. Yeah. I know. It's thrilling. Makes you a poor performer. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I'm, I'm good. I, 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 that, that's. That, that 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 that's not shade. That's that's tea. Okay. <laughs> see, see, I do pick up on some of these terms from my co-hosts. I might be the mm. one who has VH1, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not the one who watches Drag Race. <laughs> but I pick up a few things. Anyways, moving on. Gary. What is the topic today? The topic. Uh, so we're returning to a series that we haven't done an episode for in quite a while. Uh, the What Is series. And uh, the question is, what is pleasure? Ooh. So, Mr. Damon, I saved you a step. And on the dock, I put the definition. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, thank you, because I actually had it up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Because I knew for this episode we were going to get into this. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. So, Damon, as our dictionary. Thank you. Um, what is pleasure? Um, it is a noun. As a noun, it is a feeling of happy satisfaction and enjoyment. And as an adjective, it is used or intended for entertainment rather than business. And as a verb, it is... Give to give sexual enjoyment or satisfaction to pleasure. Hmm. Basically, it's very act- interesting that the word is a is a noun, an adjective, and a verb. Yeah, yeah, because it, it, it's like it, it's same pleasure to give pleasure is pleasure. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of fits in in all categories. Of course, the thing is, pleasure kind of can mean different things just outside of all that. Mm-hmm. Because there's very true physical pleasure and emotional pleasure, and even on like physical type of pleasures. There's different types of pleasures. <laughs> yeah. I actually like what um, Wikipedia states, because it's using it kind of in, in the series and emotions. It says, um, quote, pleasure is a broad class of mental states that humans and other conscious animals experience as positive, enjoyable, or worth seeking. It includes more specific mental states such as happiness, entertainment, enjoyment, ecstasy, and euphoria. And I'll end it there because it starts going into much bigger things. But that's kind of the, I like that idea that especially with the emotional side of things that it is, um, it's one of the more positive um, emotions, feelings. Yeah, like uh, it's it's might be pleasurable to get a blow job, but it also is pleasurable to cuddle. It's also pleasurable to just have relax. some Cincinnati spaghetti. Oh God! Or chili. <laughs> Sorry, said that wrong. Yeah. I was going to make a reference to the pre-show, and I did it wrong. For the lay person who's not a patron, you don't get that reference. You needed to know the pre-show. Anyways. Pleasure uh, is pleasure is so the interesting thing grilled cheese about and pleasure, tomato soup. I feel is that you can you can uh be the giver and the receiver. Mm-hmm. So when we had um Ed on and we talked about in our show, let's talk about sex, asking and receiving. 
I thought this would be an interesting topic because um, I think this is how most people view it in terms mm-hmm. of um, giving and receiving pleasure. Mm-hmm. I, I think they tend to go to the verb as in, you know, uh, sexual enjoyment or satisfaction. But there are other aspects to it. Like, Damon, I think you were just saying, you know, about like just resting or being quiet, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, can be uh, pleasurable to an individual because maybe you have a very hectic life and, you know, solitude or silence, you know, um, is something like that. I think of busy parents, mm-hmm. um, you know, mothers, uh, fathers who, you know, have kids running around all the time and, you know, it's things that they're trying to take care of a, a, a family home. Yeah. And I get that one time, like that, like few hours where the kids are asleep, they don't have, they're not running around doing anything. They're done with the cleaning or whatever. And they right. can just like sit and be. <laughs> and, and, just decompress. Be, and to be fair, decompress. none of us have any experience with child rearing. Well, it, it you might be an aunt, uncles, and it, you might be right. an uh, uncle or something to somebody. I just became an uncle within the past year, been less than a year. Yeah, I think so. So, and even that, the youngest is like eleven or twelve. <laughs> so, so I didn't even get that. Um, congrats on being a uncle. Uh, <laughs> Right. And, and so, like, in terms of, like, you know, with children, like, I saw a meme last night. That's why it came up and it made me uh, chuckle because it said about, you know, after the hecticness of the day, blah, 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 and you put your kids to bed and then you hear the floor creak and you think to yourself, that better be a monster and not my children getting back out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, that sums up parenting in one perspective. Like, you're just kind of done with everything and you're like, I'd rather deal with that than this. I was like, okay, how interesting. So, um, so, so, parenting advice from from the gays who have no kids uh, is to uh, 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 make sure to frighten your children to stay in bed uh, by letting them know about the monsters that are underneath it. Meh. I think I it's too much of a psychological damage. I'd rather give yeah. them like a Dimatap laced popsicle before bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> just make David spit take. <laughs> it's like Dynatap. I'm glad I didn't drink. I almost drank. That would have been Dynatap, the kids' version of Nyquil. <laughs> Anyways, I'm obviously not endorsing that. I'm joking for anybody out there, but give us give them cross energy all and they'll be out. We re- we really night. don't want you to uh, uh uh psychologically damage your kids by by scaring them about monsters under your bed <laughs> or drug your kids. Or drug them. Yeah. <laughs> or, no, 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 no. Long <laughs> explanation for one. Super easy explanation for the other. No, I mean it's just you know, I I you know don't make mm-hmm. them chemically dependent, but you'll find your way. <laughs> find a balance. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> find a healthy balance. <laughs> when you really need your rest, that's when well, you're the time to do So to segue back into the topic, I think the challenge is, is to meet people where they are and give them what they want. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, kids who are up late at night or whatever, there's something going on as to why they're up. Like, and it's difficult, I think, for adults to relate to children sometimes because we are so far removed oh, it has wow. been years if not decades since we were last you know mm-hmm. in touch with them mm-hmm. or on their level so to speak um but i kind of feel that way also with you know even being adults like talking to each other and you know doing things that are uh meant to induce pleasure um mm-hmm. whether it's hanging out gaming socializing mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. being active doing things uh doing things to each other with each other and each mm-hmm. other um yeah yeah like it's pleasure can like it it does run the gamut like for sure like there are so many things that can be pleasurable and i think we i think us as human beings tend to prefer to find things that are pleasurable and keep doing them 
Well, yeah, because we're we're genetically geared that way. Like we have this yeah. whole pleasure, like resource, you know, referencing mm-hmm. system, and it's like, oh, this is good. I enjoy this. I should do more of this, mm-hmm. which is also problematic because that's how addiction like takes hold. Because you know, yeah, I enjoy no eating all the time. I like drinking. I like, um, you know, eyeing the pain or the negative You're stuff. You're avoiding the pain. Yeah. Yeah. That, so that's I sort I of the other aspect gamble. of it. Or mm-hmm. I, you know, become a chronic masturbator, or I, you know, pay for sex on the daily, whatever. Um, I mean, you mm-hmm. make chronic masturbating sound bad. Well, it well, can there's, be. It can be. Like, to me, when I think of, like, anything along those lines, like, like chronic, to me, like, chronic masturbation are, I think of things that t- take you away from, like, functions of life. Like, you need to work to pay bills to 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 you know get money you know you need you need to work to get the money to pay the bills that you need to sustain your life if you are masturbating all the time and avoiding work or are always late for work or are um are masturbating while you're at work and get caught and cause a huge human resources situation like that's where it could be a bad thing <laughs> um and i think like the big thing for me is that it's always about balance you know mm-hmm. we need to find while we can enjoy the things that give us pleasure um we cannot avoid the things that cause us pain and unless it's absolutely possible like there are things that can maybe cause us pain um mentally that we can potentially avoid in the sense that we don't have to think too much or think too hard about them. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, there's a difference to me between like constantly being pleasured, like, like that constant feeling of euphoria and not getting out of that, that can be just as bad Mm -hmm. as you know, dealing with the pain or having any kind of pain. Right. In general, for most people, I would assume, I mean, pleasure comes in many different forms, as we've been saying. And I think one of those key factors is anything that gives you a dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. Which is something that's just generating your body. uh, And you you just enjoy, enjoy something, whether you're watching a comedy uh, and you start laughing your ass off at something, uh, uh, or or even some things like that are really just cathartic, like mm-hmm. a a good tragedy would would do that because you might end up being sad about it, but that emotional journey gives you that dopamine mm-hmm. hit, and even though you might cry or something like one of my favorite things is transformers from 1985 the movie okay. prime died i bawled and i think that's what spoiler alert <laughs> <laughs> it's like 35 years old <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm it's kidding. definitely not a spoiler. It doesn't matter to David, apparently. He's looking out for those few people out there who in three and a half decades haven't seen the damn thing, apparently. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually kidding. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm just, I was, it was just me just to throw that joke in. Yeah, just uh, why, why do you know what you're doing? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I mean, and, and, and things such as your comfort foods. I mean, the comfort foods give you pleasure just from, from the fact, like, my classic tomato soup and grilled cheese sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Totally pleasurable. In the meantime, I also like a good blowjob where somebody's fingering my ass. So, same same thing. Oh, They're both pleasure, very different type of things. <laughs> follow okay. up, David. Follow Are up. you getting the pleasure from the blowjob or from the 
finger hitting your prostate. Like, <laughs> like. No, I, I don't even mean like necessarily. I mean, no, yes, it, it's probably a combination. <laughs> Maybe sixty forty. <laughs> yeah. There's a percentage in there, and it and and they may not even be actually getting into there. Just like you know, kind of like if you had, had two it. people, one person is blowing you, while somebody else is giving you a rim job, or just the rim job. You know, it's well, we know. I haven't been rimmed in forever. We know what gives yeah, some pleasure. So, one of the things I want to talk about um, is the crossover between pain and pleasure. Because, Damon, you were talking about, <laughs> you know, um, the emotional, like, and kind of, like, I think people think if, if emotions are, like, kind of on a, a circle or a wheel, mm -hmm. and, like, there were opposites, um, mm -hmm. that they would think that pain is the opposite of pleasure. But, yeah. As we've discussed previously in LTAK series, like there is a crossover, like yeah. there's a center point that draws the two of them together that people can be given pain, but they find it pleasurable. Uh huh. Um, in consensual kink, um, you know, uh, moments, I think that is the goal is to um, reach, you know, a certain place within yourself as the sub, as the dom in the moment of what's happening by quote unquote putting someone, you know, uh, through something that others may consider to be a negative state, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and pain in some version that it's actually uh, releasing endorphins and can be pleasurable. Um, you know, and I think that, like, I think the king community far more uh, than others is able to understand when people do things to inflict harm on themselves. And that it's mm -hmm. not in their best interest, but they do it because there is something pleasurable about it. Like I think of um, people who cut themselves or mark themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think some people struggle with this because they're like, why would you do that? Like, that's just an awful thing to do. And it's, and I get the questions, they're a bit judgmental, but I understand it because you don't have a frame of reference as to why somebody would do that. But the mm -hmm. reason that they do it is because it gives them some sense of pleasure. Even if the pleasure is minimal and it just brings them back to the moment in mm -hmm. which they feel like they have control over themselves or yeah. can divert pain, like other pain, psychological pain maybe, or emotional pain. So pleasure has like pleasure is kind of like a big umbrella thing and touches mm -hmm. practically everything in some fashion. Whether it's, you know, eating frosting out of a tub or you know fisting wow. someone or mm -hmm. you know getting flogged or beat running a you 5k know, that, yeah like um yeah in the like the king community is sadomasochism mm -hmm. the, like kind of you know kind of thing is the whole and i'm sorry i had to look it up because i always get the words wrong <laughs> so um um like psychological tendency or sexual practice characterized by both sado sadism and masochism, which is sadism is the one where you get pleasure from causing pain. And I think the masochist is the one who gets pleasure from receiving the pain. If, if I'm remembering correctly, it has been a minute. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that is well involved and well ingrained in the leather and kink community. Um, there are people that do get that, that release, that pleasure from that physical pain. They can go into that headspace that, um, clears their mind or allow, like it's very euphoric, um, for some of them. Um, and on the flip of that, the person who is delivering the pain on the person is enjoying the fact that they are getting giving that person that pain pleasure moment um it, it it it's complicated but not that complicated when you kind of think of it like that you know in those kind of like very simple like one step two step one person is this the other person is that kind of way mm -hmm. So, 
one of the things I find mm-hmm. intriguing about the concept of pleasure is that we, um, I think more often than not as humans, learn early on what pleasure is, but it's not defined because like, especially in terms of like an, an emotional state mm-hmm. or even a physical state, um, like arousal, uh, things of that sort. Um, and we are quickly, um, I guess I want to say instructed, trained, what, uh, reinforced or whatever that certain things aren't, uh, acceptable. So I think about like with parenting and, you know, babies and how like they will discover things about themselves, but society says it's inappropriate, like running around without a diaper on, um, or, you know, <laughs> playing with themselves you know, doing different things and it's like, oh, you know, that's against the moral code or whatever. Um, yeah. And I find it very interesting how like that can, you know, have profound effects into the future as to how we look at certain things and, and you know, have uh, respect, quote unquote, uh, for communities and structure and things of that sort. And then as you get older, you develop your own senses, your own definitions, um, create your own... Uh, arenas possibly you know boxes as to how you look at stuff and i think that's one of the better things about the human experience is that you can do that so as you get older you can say to yourself and be like oh actually i really don't agree with that like i was kind of told this but mm, it's not really my thing and you know with the circumstances of what we're dealing with today in our society i find it interesting how uh, people are really struggling. So with, for those of you in the future, looking back, remember it's 2020, you know, the magical year, the year of a <laughs> pandemic. Um, yeah. And how it yeah, really yeah. inflicts things on people. So I think people are struggling with um, a lot of different items. One of them is a sense of themselves because a lot of us derive our identity through what we do. And uh-huh. when you can't do that thing, then you tend to struggle in like being satisfied uh, and satisfaction I think is a piece of, of pleasure and what do you do in the in those uh, aspects and I think it, it can really be part of the the underlying drive as to why people make the decisions that they do if this isn't pleasurable to me then I'm not going to do it uh, mm-hmm. as for instance people you know not uh, not a I think it's really in the minority. I think it gets reflected or shown a lot in media, especially in social media, but I think it's in the minority of individuals who are it. like not willing uh, to mm-hmm. as take precautions for safety, such as wearing a mask. Um, they feel, you know, that they have their own individual right to, you know, not do so. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it is, it's kind of, uh, I think it's kind of dicey because you have to figure out, you know, where the, the focus is. Uh, and so I can understand, like, if it doesn't, if it isn't comfortable, and I think comfort is a big piece of, like, pleasure. Like, why would you be, why uh-huh. would you will, why would you willingly do something if it doesn't, if it's not comfortable? Uh-huh. Well, as we were just discussing, you know, you were saying with like uh, S and M and kink, like, sometimes you push through the uncomfortable because you know what's on the other side, like what's to come. Exactly. From. Yeah. Which I just realized also can relate to sex. Like um, when it comes to, you know, anal sex, most individuals do not find their first or first few times, you know, necessarily pleasurable, at least not immediately. Because yeah. to be honest, functionally, that is not exactly how that is. this that hole is not for things to go in it is for things to come out like that is that is the purpose <laughs> like the biological purpose of the anus um. right <laughs> but we as a species discovered it has a ton of nerve endings and yes. therefore you know that can be a feedback loop system that can you know move from pain to pleasure uh wow that's a really interesting wild metaphor i had never thought about that before sorry um, but no, I was just like overlaying it. I was thinking about how like, you know, the anus, you know, can go from pain to pleasure, just like the things in like kink can, um, mm-hmm. you know, anyways. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, you're not, you're not wrong. Like it's something to think about. And, um, you know, anyone who has 
I mean, I'm just going to put it like this. Anyone who has ever, like, tickled their asshole, like, like in 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 the shower or in, in any way, shape, or form, even, if, even the, like, I hate to say, even, like, the most, like, heterosexual, like, male, mm-hmm. there's something there. Like, as you said, there are a bunch of nerve endings there that are just, like, you know, and when you hit them in, like, just the right way, like... It's it could potentially be orgasmic. Like like, I'm I'm I am not a, a a bottom. I haven't been a bottom in a long long time. But like, if you want to play and touch and like feel around in there, like I'm all for it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's just, well, because and I mean like yeah, if you were talking about like you you you're kind of becoming more verse, and. Um, you enjoy like maybe during like just like a blowjob, like someone to like put put their finger there. Like it adds to the sensation because there are a bunch of little things there that are adding like at, like like that mm-hmm. can touch and feel and make it feel like really really good. And you're just adding more like waves of pleasure on top of what you're already getting ple- you know, pleasure from. Right. So like why not have more? Like we're greedy motherfuckers. Like so here you go. Like. Well, I mean, yeah, and no offense, the American society is pretty much the epitome of greed. Uh, yeah, fact. Like, there. And I'm not making a political statement. I'm just talking about observationally. Like, just look yeah. around at what we have out there in terms of, like, what's available in the commercial retail space. Uh, you know, America is kind of the land of, of food buffets. You know, endless mm-hmm. lines of, you know, all you can eat. Well, used to be before the pandemic. Um, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that's, you know, like, it, like, but that's kind of the thing overall. Like that's like more like be like you can sometimes be gluttonous in your pleasure. Um, to me, as long as you know consent, da 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 da, is is you know is part of that. You know, Jeff, you like you mentioned, you have the guy. Like if you. Like, it's great to allow someone while they're so blowing you off to, like, put the finger there. Like, you're not, you're, you've made, if you've talked about it and discussed it, then it's obviously no big deal. But, like, if it just happens to happen, I mean, you might be okay with it, you know, depending on certain other factors. But, like, like hey, like, ooh, there, there's a little surprise. Like, and I'm definitely enjoying it. Like, let me just ride this little wave of, you know, euphoric. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and one thing which kind of was discussed last week, uh, but the one thing that kind of bugs me at times is is I I haven't really found a lot of people who don't instinctively go there. Mm-hmm. And oh well, do, I'm not surprised. Do what I want, and then me being by uh, weird socially awkward person being i don't ask for it which is the problem my own problem um and i'm sure there's plenty of people willing to do it they just don't do it uh, for whatever reason yeah but i always find yeah. that 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 when i'm giving a, a blow job I, i'm going to use use my hands to to touch other places to help enhance how I'm giving that blowjob, I'm not. I'm not just going to go go straight cock. I'm going to get the balls a little bit of attention, whether it's with my mouth or with my my hands, tickle them, get a little in the taint, move down to the ass, and I, I always like touch, but not necessarily like really poke it in there at all, and see how they react. If they they do react well, then I move away and everything like that you know it's like yeah. the, hey can i go over here and then get the signal no? that no okay, okay, okay. cool <laughs> oh, okay. We're good. We're good. you know hey, okay we're just, but, we're I, just but I, what we're doing. I, I make it so it's like indicating that i'm going there but not actually going there uh, so so that it's you're, not like a, i'm doing something that's non-consensual it's more of like a motion you're, way you're, of of you're, of you're, asking <laughs> <laughs> is yeah. this okay? You're, 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 and then you're pointing that you're 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 like you're given the roadmap, like you're 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 pointing the directions. They can choose to go that way. 
Yeah. Or they may want to turn right. Like, and they're good. Like, you're yeah. Well, like, yeah. I mean, I'm like, think of it in, like, gaming terms. Like, you're checking out the map of what's in front of you. And sometimes you're like, is there a warning sign? Oh, there's a warning sign. Okay, I probably won't go over there for now. Mm-hmm. Or at all. Or, or vice or versa. <laughs> there's a warning sign? Oh, I'm going to check that out. <laughs> Are, 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 there's a, like, More there's a big flashing like green sign saying go, 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 go. Like, of course they're going to go. Like, ha ha. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I, I, guys really need to learn more about uh, 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 dealing with the undercarriage while, while dealing, dealing with the front, uh, dealing with the back while working on the front. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think. And, personal ahead, opinion. Yeah. No, no, you go ahead, because you're probably going to say what I was going to say. So, oh, for us. Maybe. So, we'll see. Um, I think we as a society, you know, are still uh, hundreds of years later dealing with this, what we quote unquote call, you know, puritanical concepts about, you know, mm-hmm. sex and pleasure and those kind of things. And while I can understand that for some people it's a forbidden zone or a no-go zone or whatever, I think that ties into other stuff. Like, I think if you were to break it down and ask them and talk about it, they would talk about, you know, like, oh, well, you know, that's where, you know, I have a bowel movement and feces come out and that's gross and da 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 you know, and and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, that's really the root of it. You know what I mean? Like, and Mm -hmm. even then, there's still an underlying, like, you've adopted that, you've accepted that, you developed that from somewhere. People didn't tell you, like, you didn't come out of the womb, you know what I mean? Or, you know what I mean, with that ingrained in you. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not a foregone thing that's passed down genetically that we absolutely avoid it. Yeah. Hence, we're busy talking about it. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, so I think that one of, the, one of the things about being a human uh, – potential is like the journey of breaking down walls like as you get older and you learn things and you say to yourself like oh well that was something i was taught when i was younger and i don't necessarily agree with that or i don't Mm -hmm. you know that doesn't apply to me anymore um not everyone has that kind of an experience you know as they age that they say oh this is you know whatever i mean i and that's been a big thing for me because when i was in my 20s to where I am now, like half a lifetime ago, I was really a different person in terms of like sex and um, understanding pleasure and the concepts uh-huh. of that and what all is involved. I was uh, fairly judgmental and presumptive um, about why people would choose to do certain things. And, and I've had a lot of experiences I feel blessed for that I've taken a step back and been like, okay, what's going on here? Like why, instead of... Um, making a presumption why don't i try to like learn something from this in Uh this moment and and see what i get out of it because i feel if i the more i learn the better i become i the more well-rounded i am i can relate to people better understand their circumstance um make them feel comfortable like in the space that we're in even if it's just you know two rant two strangers in a moment who happen to meet over you know a, a circumstance uh, that's unexpected. You know, you just kind of, okay, yeah. like what's, let's see what's, what, what the situation is here. And it, um, and I hope from those interactions, like the other person has a better short term, like effect, if not a whole day, you know what I mean? Like from having an interaction, but it's not, it's not easy. You know, we're constantly riding an emotional roller coaster all over the place. You know, we're angry, we're sure. sad, we're mad, we're annoyed, we're upset, you know, we're frustrated. We're, you know, uh-huh. on ecstasy, whatever. So it's just about, like, when we meet each other. <laughs> yeah. Okay, when I said on ecstasy, I did not mean actually, like, wow. what I meant was... I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? The feeling of that, ecstasy, not the actual drug. Yeah. But not the drug. Yeah. Got it. Not, um, to, not to poo-poo people who take ecstasy, you know, you do you, boo. Just, you just be safe. Just please don't be harmful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I just, kind of just read my co host shirts. Yeah, I kind of get that, um, Gary. Like, that's the thing I think for all of us, like, we all need to kind of like understand, like, your, your understanding and grasp of yourself and what you get pleasure from is important. 
like what do what gives you pleasure like whether from the mundane to the ridiculous like what you know what in your normal everyday life gives you pleasure you know um some people really enjoy like taking a, a, shower, a nice hot shower and get pleasure from that you know part of them you know that thing there are people that have get enjoy good you know proper hygiene like i hate i'm trying to like be stupid like like the mundane things in life you know having a breakfast kind of thing and then you know you know go into some of the more extreme things you know um i know i'm a bit of a sadist like not like not to the like the extreme, like not very very sadist but i'm kind of sadistic in some way like a little bit just a yeah, it's a little bit like when I enjoy, like when I'm like flogging or spanking or paddling or you know whatever with someone, I'm enjoying the reactions that I'm getting from their bodies and from their like mouths, their vocal, their physical um, reactions to those things. Like um, I am enjoying that. Um, you're getting pleasure I, from their, yeah. they're getting pleasure from the pain that you're giving them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a very reciprocal kind of loop there. Double the you pleasure, know? double the fun. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. And again, you know, as many people, I, I left my nipples for sure. And yeah, if you want, if like to give me pleasure, that would be one place you can go. Like, Right, like there, like you know, get on those, and I will be fine. Yeah, so, mine, don't, mine don't really work, and I'd let yeah. people know that, but I don't stop them from doing it unless it's, yeah, they're I, they're doing something they're biting and and it's painful. But yeah, it, it, it's and, a and if you want to go ahead, just know it's not really it's giving fine. me pleasure, but I'm okay with it. It's fine. It's not going to do anything. Like I had, I I have like it. I had a guy that I who had like had beautiful fucking nipples, but he was like, "Do not touch them. I get nothing from them. I actually, it, they're they're not overly sensitive, or maybe they are overly sensitive. So please don't play with them in any way, shape, or form." Like he he gave that rule from the beginning. They're, they're sensitive, was, but not in the pleasurable way. <laughs> yeah, like. And he, I was, I'm happy he told me that because had he not told me that would have been all up on him. Like, cause they, they, they're very nice looking nipples that makes sense to anyone. Probably not to anyone, but. Well, I mean, the, the key thing is, is that he communicated uh -huh. ahead of time, like for the situation that was developing like an awareness and you know kind of a boundary a guideline to go by um yeah you know and that's and that's a key thing you know when it comes to pleasure you know it's like um well as for instance like uh last you know yesterday i was uh, doing some stuff during the day and then i'd come home and you know my friends uh visiting and you know was like nina do you want to go get dinner and it was like, well, actually, I was really wanting ice cream. And I was like, oh, okay. And they're like, I was kind of thinking that would be dinner, just ice cream. And I was like, got it. <laughs> you know, like, that's a thing. So we did. We went out and we got ice cream for dinner. Um, <laughs> so, you know, and, and that in the moment is, you know, it's it's um, it wasn't a negotiation, but it was, you know, a, a way to communicate and say, this is the thing that I want. This is, you know, what in the moment is, is I think, you know, give me pleasure. Uh, you know, and I was fine with it. So we went out and we got ice cream at a local place and, uh, it was really good fucking ice cream. And, you know, so we, uh, enjoyed that, you know, and, and that's one of the things I think that's a key to communication, you know, in relationships is being able to describe that. And as I say, you know, meet individuals where they are, as opposed to telling them where they should be. Mm -hmm. Which is a big thing about my new job, you know, that I've been that I learned about, uh, and I kind of knew ahead of time. But having been a, a an instructor, a corporate trainer, in that, like, when you're educating another individual, it's best to understand that they have a set point, and so everyone's in in variable, you know, location. So anytime you start a job, and especially if you're in a multi uh, individual uh, training instructional where, you know, it's a classroom, even if there's just two or three people, 
you usually find that like everybody is a little different. So some people have a wealth of background. They already have a ton of skills in certain areas and some don't. And so, you know, that's the challenge of the, you know, of the education process is to, you know, meet them where they are and figure mm -hmm. out like how to do whatever. Cause everyone is not an automaton and everyone comes in and has the exact same thing. So, you know, that's one of the things that I try to keep in mind when I meet other people, you know, um, you know, where, where and when and how are things. And I think that's like one of the biggest points about being like intimate with another person. Like that's the adventure is the mm -hmm. exploring and the understanding um, of what that is. Like there's a, I don't know who the artist is because I'm not very good at remembering this kind of stuff, but I'm going to look to Damon as our human jukebox. Um, there's a song and the lyric that everybody knows is your body is a wonderland. I think that's John Mayer. And I could be wrong. The first time I ever heard that lyric, I was like, wow. I was like, yeah. that just kind of puts it all out there, doesn't it? Um, but in a really, I think, beautiful way, but also very, like, spot on. You mm -hmm. know, that um, being with another person is like that. Like, a, you know, the human body can be an amusement park of sorts. Um and you know how much you enjoy that experience and uh and doing that is is really about the the interaction in that case so yeah i mean i think there, there's a lot to be said for for pleasure it has its pros it has its cons um uh -huh. you know and my hope is that people can determine that for themselves and find what it is and you know and some people um the, I, one of the beautiful things i love is that everybody's a little bit different in terms of like pleasure so like jeff we know that you love gaming um and so that's one of the things that derives you pleasure mm -hmm. um i was just discussing with my best friend like i can game but i know myself that like i tend to be all in or i can't like mm -hmm. it's either con over like it's overwhelming consuming in a way like maybe to the point of like being detrimental like not to my mm -hmm. finances but like just a time yeah and commitment to stuff um, or there's, you know, other things. So you have to, um, kind of find the, the balance of, of the who, the what, the where, and the when, when it comes to that. Did you get yeah. it right, Damon? Yeah, I did. And okay. the song is actually called Your Body is a Wonderland. So, okay. uh, I didn't even, and I'm going to be that, that bitch that didn't really read the lyrics before and <laughs> so, like and I'm reading these lyrics and I'm like holy shit I did not know this song was pretty fucking sexual if you like if you read it like if you read the lyrics to this song like it starts with we got the after afternoon we got this room for two one thing I've left to do discover me discovering you like what <laughs> Brownie chicken breakfast. Yes. <laughs> I'm liking this song more and more. Yeah. Um, woo. Okay. Um, so, note to everybody out there if you've got a playlist on, you know, your uh, Zoom, iPod, whatever the hell you have your <laughs> music on, you can add this song to your, to your bow, checker, bow, bow, uh, you know. <laughs> Zune. <laughs> it's fucking so Zune. <laughs> it's Zune. Yeah, well, because kids, buzz. for those those people who don't know, Zune was the Microsoft version of an iPod a long time ago, which utterly right. failed. But here's why: because it, on Twitter, I follow Buzz from years ago mm -hmm. when we did the Father's Day shows. Mm -hmm. I follow Buzz and Buzz, you know, posts some different things and he replied to someone else's post because they had a, like an older piece of technology. And it, I think it was like a, a first gen iPod or something. And he was like, well, I have a Zoom or whatever. That's why I was just, it was like at the tip of my brain. Like it just made me laugh. <laughs> I had a Zoom Yes, most of us now have a, a probably a mobile phone of some sort that houses everything, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Which is either an iPhone or Android for the most part. Yeah. Anyway, so funny. So rich. So, yeah. So add Wonderland to your sex playlist. There you go. Mm -hmm. Your body is a Wonderland is the title of the song. It is John Mayer. Um, How old is it? Do we know? 
Um, I can find out here in like two seconds. Um, it is from 2001, so it is 19 years old. I did not know it was that old. Mm-hmm. I was going to say like eight years. Well, it's oh. so weird thinking about shit like that because wow. I, you know, yeah, like I think about like songs and I go, because I, I listen to, um, when I'm at work, I listen to Pandora. Um, and I have it on shuffle and I have like, I have like my obvious, like old school, like nineties R and B station. So I know like things that are coming from that are like from the nineties, but I have other playlists and, um, I'm like, Oh, I want to like every once in a while a song will kick in and I'm like, Oh, I remember that song. Like how old is that song? And I'll go look it up and I'm like, why is this song 10 years old or 12 years old or 15 years fucking old? And like. Oh, uh, like it, 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 it welcome, God, it, welcome to Daddy Cubs Out Loud. <laughs> no, right? It made, like, it just yeah, made here is here is the opposite of pleasure. Here is annoyance. Yes, at the recognition of time <laughs> passing. Like shit. Like like I was I was oh no, um I was I listened to a comedy um station like just like today's comedy is what it's called. But it's not fucking today. Like these, 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 these um, certain like acts are from like eleven years ago. Because one of them in particular mentioned it's two thousand nine. I'm like, bitch, this really? is a current comedy. What are you talking this about? This isn't current. Well, so here, here's an interesting like side point to that. Like to go off of on your segue. So. Um, I last night, you know, uh, Heather like mentions, you know, she's here. She's like, oh, there's this comedian that's British that's really kind of funny. Like, she has this really sweet and endearing voice, but she like swears all the time. It says really inappropriate like adult things, and I was like, game. Like, let's. So we end up watching the comedy special, and it is. It's from quite a while ago. I think she said it was from like 2012, and I was like, okay, that's eight years ago. Here's part of like the the archive like historical record. She keeps talking about DVDs. Like she's like, oh, this DVD and that on DVD, and I was like. Yeah, that didn't age well. <laughs> like, <laughs> we don't really talk about DVDs no more. Everything's streaming. So uh, um, that just goes to show, you know, but it was still funny content. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, so I, I appreciated it. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> things, things, things are not what they used to be. Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of take for granted and stuff like even with work. uh thinking about how to say this so we um had to acquire more uh cell phones for some for some of the work that we're doing now currently and um one group of individuals was given flip phones and right and so there's this whole like why the hell were they given flip phones and i was trying to get the logic through to people that this is about government and budget and cost and flip phones are like 20 bucks a pop like you know they're rather you know on the low end of cost in a base level smartphone is probably around 40 to 50 like not a lot of memory doesn't do a whole lot of things but you know you could get that and the reason i know that is i'd given one to my mom like three four years ago uh maybe five years ago at that time that's what it was so i was explaining i'm like what it, you just look at the numbers and you crunch it it's like well you know when a base level smartphone is double the cost of a flip phone flip phone makes more sense because the idea was they're just going to make phone calls like they don't need to do anything else but the whole discussion mm -hmm. came about because of texting and reaching people <laughs> Right, so David knows this is about and, flip phone, bitch. right, and so people were complaining about trying to text, and some people were like, "Why is it so hard to text?" And I had to explain and remind people, I'm like, because it's T nine texting, like press you two, have to press three, two times three times to get the letter C. C. Yeah, <laughs> of like, God. so now we're in the process of of trying to get all of those upgraded. Back uh, in <laughs> my day, we only had nine nine buttons to put on there we couldn't put a smiley face <laughs> right right so there's an example of like the transition of pleasure right like over time like when when the telephone and you know uh communications over you know wire was created like that was an advancement and it gave pleasure to people because they could actually communicate in long distances and then we kept advancing on that technology and eventually we made it um you know uncorded so you could have a phone in the home 
that had an antenna on it and you could walk around the home without having a 50 foot, you know, coiled cord to, you know, knock mm-hmm. shit over and strangle, you know, pets and children and stuff. Um, and then eventually we moved, you know, into uh, cell phones, which, you know, were as big as a brick and then got smaller, smaller, smaller. And so we've been making all these bigger advances. and bigger and bigger. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that. Um, <laughs> no, so, you know, we've, we've which really has been transitioned. Funny. We've really transitioned the devices, and one of the things that the devices are giving us is pleasure, like in the way of that we have an ability to communicate, to be connected, to request things. Like, you know, I mean, I was just discussing this the other day. I was like, you know, a cell phone isn't really a phone anymore. It's a, it's a, it's a computer. It's a handheld computer okay. that does a gazillion things. Um, you know, it's a and phone, now that the new... it's an internet communication device. It's an iPod. It's a phone, a communication device, and an iPod. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it does a, a lot <laughs> of different stuff. And now the with the, correct me if I'm wrong, now with the newest Razer model that is being released, has been released, with the foldable screen, like, we're really, like, going further than what, like, a Star Trek communicator was doing. Like, <sighs> so... Yeah, there's 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 a lot to be said for the advancement of technology and what it can do for people. Hell, now you can buy you know sex toys that are wirelessly Bluetooth connected, you know, to the internet or whatever, and people can be you know thousands uh-huh. of miles away from each other, giving each other buzzing joy. So there's <laughs> there's a lot to be said for for what the, one of my I will I will oh one of my favorite things to kind of watch here and every now and then on Chatterbait is the guys that have the like. Hush or whatever love sense thing, and uh-huh. it 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 vibrates when they get like tokens, uh-huh. like a certain amount of tokens that they get. And um, there's one guy that I followed that like his set kind of like his numbers are actually pretty low, to where like even if you give like five or ten tokens, like it still does something. And it's very interesting watching that happen. It's just it's just very fun. Like that's that's the like the pleasure pain Scroll, like part of me. Like scrolling <laughs> through chat yeah. of, of like token 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 token. Yep. Yep. Well, I yeah. I mean, that, that's intentionally putting that, that I, thing up so that you can just watch it. Well, I mean, it, and that's part of like what you were saying, Damon. I think that does tie into like the sadist part. Like, and I think um, this goes. This is a horrible analogy, but go on the journey with me. It makes me think of Avenue Q in the song "Everybody's a Little Bit Racist." I think, like everybody, has the potential to be a little sadist, like to derive some pleasure from another person's like pain slash pleasure. And by that, that I mean Sutter Florida, which is another <laughs> song from Avenue Q. <laughs> <laughs> you know that that's that's another aspect of things i agree with you you know when you're watching that um that you could you know see how that is um giving them pain yet pleasure at the same time um you know because it's pretty much a fine line between the two and it you know kind of moves back and forth uh and the ability to have control over somebody else's emotional state um is in a way sadistic um so there's that And that gives us pleasure Sorry, just... <laughs> to be a li- little bit sadistic. I'm, looking... I'm literally looking at the motor razor, the new motor razor razor, and I'm just like, "Holy shit, that's freaking me out!" I, I actually oh, got the a foldable product... screen. The foldable screen, yeah, yeah, technology. That's... But anyway, it is kind continue. of wild. Continue. Yeah. Continue, Jeff. Continue. I remember Sorry. having a, just... a product red Motorola razor when the original flip Motorola razors. I, I was not a razor person, but I couldn't avoid it, man. Everyone around me seemed to have one. Like I, I like that it was hot. thin. <laughs> right. That my yeah, first I was like one. a Nokia, one of the the, the, the the like candy bar Nokia yeah. phones mm-hmm. that were like this, like two inches thick. Yep. And this one was just like half an inch thick and I could just easily slip it in my pocket. Like, I don't understand right. stand people getting the like iPhone 11 Max, which are is basically like a small tablet. I'm like, 
how does that fit in your pocket? <laughs> well, so, so there is something to be said for, well, I agree with the pocket issue. I think there is something to be said for form factor and how functional it is. Like, I got the newest iPhone CS, whatever, I can't remember what the hell they call it, um, that came after the 11 that just came out because it's the same f size everything as the 8, which is what I used to have. And, um, in fact, I have to trade my 8 in, but uh, the 8, like, I like the factor. I have smaller hands. Like, my fingers do not reach as far for dexterity to, like, touch things on the screen in the app. So, like... But for work, I was given an iPhone 11. So I have this gargantuan, you know, thing with a case and all that. And I'm like, Ugh. I mean, I've adapted <laughs> to it, but it is it is kind of annoying. And I think that the that the back in the day, the Razor and the new one. Um, yeah, the new one has some nostalgia to it. But it like I think it like there was something about that slim profile, like minimal, you know, uh, space that it takes up. And you know what it was uh, able to do. So I think you know I'm I'm kind of surprised it hasn't made the impact that I thought it would. Like, and I don't. But that's why I said I wasn't sure if it was released or yet or not. Like, Damon, when you were looking, like, is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you can buy it now. Okay. It's expensive as fuck, but you can buy it now. <laughs> yeah. Mean, well, the foldable screen it. is the, it, right now is 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 expensive technology. If you, if you want it more affordable, you gotta wait like five to ten years yeah maybe so not that long, is, but it's gonna be a while what i'm hearing is it's not pleasurable to the pocket like to the wallet no it is yes. not pleasurable to the pocket you're beating the fuck out of your pocket with this phone like non-consensual like <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah well, and that's anyway. the other thing is, you know, uh, we've we've really required as a society that things be more indestructible, especially the higher ticket items. Like that's the philosophy. The more mm -hmm. the more pennies, the more dollars, the more pounds, the more whatever your currency is you put to something, the better you expect the quality and the satisfaction to be, and the more pleasure you're going to get from it. So it's like, you know, um, if I'm going to spend this much, I expect to get this out of it. Um, it's just kind of the scale of economy is, is the, the way I think it's viewed. It doesn't always work that way, but I think it's incumbent upon us yeah. to do some research and figure that stuff out. True. So that's pretty much all I had for today. Yeah. Yeah. Ditto. Pretty much it. Uh, now, you know, different ways to pleasure yourself. I don't know. I come up with these things on the fly. They're not necessarily good. I do want to say earlier, David, I wasn't disrespecting you by laughing, but you did make a comment about, um, you were saying something about pleasing yourself. So I was like, but that wasn't your intent. Like you were, you were using it as a reference and you were not necessarily talking about masturbating at the moment. So anyways, I was chuckling because I was like, oh, really? it's okay. <laughs> Pleasure away. Like, you're like, I see yourself. how you are. Love yourself. Pleasure yourself, <laughs> like, and the world will be a better place. Exactly. True debt. Anyways, guess what, folks? That's the end. Aww. But anyways, contact us. Uh, let us know what gives you pleasure. Wink. Uh, at CubsOutLoud.com and leave a comment on the blog. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Uh, tell us over the phone. Oh, we're at 361 talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on our various, various social media outlets at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, YouTube. You can also join our entourage chat. Get a ping when uh, we get we start up uh, recording the show, especially when we're doing it at a time that we haven't been doing it really frequently, such as this, where we're doing it in the morning where after night I've had insomnia. We won't get into that. That's all at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, find out, for the most part, when we plan on doing these shows by going to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can also get various merchandising coutrements, such as the Consent is My Foreplay shirts, that uh, that the pup and leather that my uh, co-hosts are, are showing off here, or just Bear one of our leather. regular logo. Bear leather. I'm wearing leather, Jeff. Gary's wearing um, bear. 
I said pup, didn't I? Yeah. Yes, you did. Okay. It's okay. Anyways. We do have pup. We have trans, but we have got uh, drag. Do we have any others that I'm missing? Mm-mm. Okay, I think we got it. Got it covered. So we've got a plethora of different different styles when it comes to the concept is a full play shirt. You have version three t shirt, etc. You can get uh, various other reward. Oh, that's all it says dot com slash comes out loud and that's and also you can look for your localization so you can get cheaper shipping. <laughs> Same products. Mm-hmm. Uh, by going to zazzle.co.uk, zazzle.ca, etc. Zazzle has a whole bunch of different familiar places. Just make sure you've got the right localization. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud, where recently some of our patrons have been getting some of their rewards. Yay. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I They've getting their shirts, which look good. Yeah, we're sadly bad about that. Um, and uh, if you just want to uh, shoot us some money, just a one-time donation, you can go to paypal.me slash cubsoutloud. You can uh, rate us on, on Apple Podcasts and subscribe to us to Google Play Podcasts and Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It says box at box, puppy box, cub box, something other. And in some cases, wind, we're wind gem. I'm giving out my gamer tag. Cool. Yay. Um, I am Theater Cub 79 on most bear related sites and Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. My Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Uh, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabber73. That's G A R B E A R 73. It's just a polite reminder if you're going to friend request me or try to follow me or whatever, uh, you can send me a message and let me know so I know like that you, you're the real deal and not some you know bot. Or something. Uh-huh. Hey, 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 I saw you on Cubs Out Loud. I'm going to follow you. That sort of thing. And with that, uh, where's my thing? Say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. Bye.